The Man with the Rubber Face by John Miriam. The trouble with being a struggling young actor, thought Don Dale, it was once Don Dubert, is that the struggle wears you out, especially if you don't eat regularly. You wanted to do a horror movie, but not as a human skeleton. Dale strolled the hot sidewalks past my Arthur Park, near 7th and Arthur Streets in South Los Angeles. This is where many of the actors, writers and beatniks in L.A. hung out. Ones that couldn't afford the rent in the Hollywood district. He was a tall, blonde young man, very handsome. I wonder when of it. Regarding himself in the plate glass windows, he pulls past windows of pawn shops, radio TV repair store, stores, each week he frowned ruefully. Sports shirt and jeans didn't do enough for him at all. He needed some new clothes, some front clothes. Then maybe a producer would notice him. He needed money to make a splash. By this time, he was about ready to do anything. Dale, to get it, he looked into the window of one of the pawn shops and halted the bait on the baking sidewalk, only beginning to shadow with the afternoon. There were some suits inside. A friend of his had once found a brand new 150 pound suit for only a small tear in the lining for six, five pound. Not that he had any five pounds at least, not to spare, but still. Then he saw it, right in the window. It was the small hand letter sign we read, Kuru Crediton, personal makeup art kit. Make me an offer. Dell looked at it. It wasn't like a fake. All of it, it, it was there, the base, the grease paint, bits of hair, face hair, trimmings, pliers, more of all of it, an old worn wooden case with a lid. Mirror that was beginning to flake off from the back, leaving the faint dust of black snow across the still lake of the glass. This might be a good gimmick, Dale thought. Go to addition with this thing, maybe make a spill about Carew passing it on to him as a kid or something. Besides, he simply wanted the thing. He needed it. He could make a splash. So he's going to have it. That was only logical. He walked into the entrance of the pawn shop. Down a short flight of stairs, display windows having ground level, being ground level, but the store having a basement entrance. Probably a building was the design of New York builder who would move to California. Curl Crediton, Dell thought. He must have been one of the truly great stars of silent movies, and then even made some fine early talkies. Many people think seem to think that new Charlie Jr. senior had been the one, only one making movies in the silent era, but there had been others, the great actor John Barry, more than had departed from his romantic roles for Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and even Karloff had started back then. But there had been a member of others, perhaps not so famous, including Carew Colton, Creighton, who not worked for major studios like Universal, unlike Journey, he never received the publicity others had. But Creighton had a great was a great horror man. Even the day's movies played a small art theatres before film associates so that is where Charney been known as a man with a thousand faces. Crichton was named called the man with a rubber face. Call the basement was with relief was the heat of the street. A cool calm and a chill memory of the first Carew Crichton movie. Dale had taken a bo- as a boy revival on the t- early talking a half thing. In it, Crichton had betrayed a man who only had bones on one side of his body, the other side hanging limp and hideous, the flesh almost liquid. A tinkle of the store bell brought Dale back to the present. Hi there, called the hefty pawnbroker. What'll it be today, bud? 
A makeup case in the window, the actor said. I'd like to see it. You want to buy it? The store owner said, eyeing him sharply. Dale shrugged. I oh, might, if, if if it's what I want. Ron Baker hesitated, then said briskly, OK, I'll get it right out for you, buddy. Dale waited until the big man went to the front of the store, climbed up a few minutes steps and hauled the case in the window. Returning to the counter, carrying the kit up open, he put it down. A bug on the old silent movie stuff, huh? Ron Baker said, I get one of you guys in here every so often. What stuff on... Clara Bow, Doug Frank Ranks, William S. Hart had a cut pile of old movie posters in here a couple of months ago. Might get some more. I'm an actor, Dale said. I want just want the makeup kit. I can't care who it belonged to. Don't you didn't you ever hear of Caro Crichton? He was big, very big, but eccentric. That's what ruined him in pictures. Really? Dale said politely. Sure, I've got it all got all the inside dope and things like that. Big man said, you know, like Crichton, Ken Malin Mal- Mal- had to quit the movies because his horse, Tarzan, died. Tom Mix couldn't take make m- 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 talkies because he's really a deaf moot. Somewhat how Dale doubted both of these stories. What, what about Crichton? He wouldn't make movies out nowhere but New York City during the months of December, July, January and February. It was okay in the early days. The studios were back there then, but everything moved to Hollywood. All his stuff had to shoot on location and got expensive, but he wouldn't listen to reason. How much for the case? Dale asked. Big man grinned. You saw the sign? Make me an offer. Ten pound, Dale said. Well, yelled the talk from Baker. I asked for an offer, not an insult. Big man slammed down the old lid on the new case. All the magic and mystery inside and threw the catches. You bum, he screamed at Dale. You come in here off the street and make me an offer like that for a vain, valuable piece of property like this. I wouldn't sell it to you, no matter what you offered me. Not what, not if you offered me a hundred, hundred. The hulking form pushed Dale aside for a thrust of hairy hand and stormed back towards the display window, feeling his face flaming with anger. Dale tried to think clearly, obviously. A slob like this would didn't deserve a rare item like a makeup case. Stoll was deserted, shadowy, the interior invisible from the street. The actor's eyes darted over the litter of the pawn items, found the inevitable musical instruments of tr- trumpet. Mr. Paul Merker, Dale thought, your time, day of judgment has arrived. It's time for the last trumpet. As a big man finished replacing the case in the window, started down a short flight of st- window ste- wooden steps. Dell came around behind him and brought the musical instrument crashing down on his skull. Proven Baker lay on the floor, too broken even for pulling. As Dell removed the case from the window, he thought it would serve a slob like that right if he were dead. The case was a phony. Dell stormed up and down his tiny room, literally beating his head and his fists. All that trouble for nothing. Finally, he lit up the cigarette, sat down to examine the case critically. You fa- should have known the hair pieces and light would be so dry you would fall apart. So the makeup containers were absolute fakes. A nose putty container, or rather what was labelled nose putty, had opened and revealed a shiny tin interior. Completely keen and odourless, as if it never contained anything. K still looked authentic, the wooden box, and it was right initials KC. He had to ran his fingers along the wood. It parted under his fan- fans. Coming apart, he thought. He was sorry he'd done it now. The pawnbroker was, was born, of course. Up to the next day, screaming his head off. Now Dale had trouble. You can get big trouble over that, something like that. And now he saw the case open to a perceived scene. There was something inside. In a secret compartment was a small bottle wrapped with paper. Dale went well with the paper and read. My formula for a rubber face by Coral Crichton. Whoever is clever enough to find this. The bottle contains this distillation of chemical formula. It was given to me by a very old Eastern Indian in my early days in show business, working a small circus. With me, inje- with an injection of this formula, a great plasticity of the flesh is possible. The skin itself is modelled into new shapes, but with this gift comes sudden responsibilities and hazard. 
Dale stopped breathing. What a gimmick, he said to himself. What a great gimmick, he chuckled to himself. This really ought to make a splash. He quickly read the label and looked deeper into the compartment for the instrument. He found needed to make the take the formula. He found it. Dale took a dose of Karoo Car- Crichton's formula in a stratified manner. Tensely he went over to the rest in a small room. He threw out the window shade as a, so the sunlight would give him a well lighted view of his face. Standing in the brilliant sun, a moment he nervously threw open the window to relieve the stiffening heat of the California Masora. His eyes looked back at him strangling strangely from the glass glassing from the glass. He thought, almost giggling. He pulled back one eyelid for a closer inspection. It stayed pulled back with a curious and oriental look. It was that it that was it, quite and realized the Orient, or at least the Far East. An Indian rubber man, a real one. That's what, what who had given quite the formula. And now he had been and that's how he'd been the man with a rubber face. And now Del Del Don Del had created his role, even a halfling. He could make a fortune. He tried all the roles that he could recruit. Dull sculpted his face into the weird goggles and protest saints into the village of Hunchback and Frankenstein Munster, strange ones that were even stranger ones. His mind went back to the halfling, a thing that almost liquid flesh had seen quite and do. He, when he had been a boy, he tried it. He looked, tried letting his arm hang limp. That plastic was easy. But then a, ridic- then a ridiculous alarm. He tried to straighten his arm out. He wouldn't straighten. Dale looked at the face in the mirror, the face that wasn't changing of his own accord, that was flowing to new weird contours. Suddenly Dale remembered what the pawnbroker had told him at Crichton just abruptly. He knew the old actor and made all his monster films in the winter, New York in the winter. Dale looked up the bright, hot, California sun and screamed once. Miss Hudson patted on Don Dale's door angrily. Less noise, Mr. Dale, the landlady said. You and your wild friends of yours have got to keep your voices down. When there was no response, she tried the door. When it opened, she entered, sniffing noisily. Empty, she observed. What's that rubber smell? Finally, she saw the pole, a shining liquid on the carpet near the dresser. He's going to have to clean that stuff up itself, she said. Looks like a rubber stuff used by the to mess up tyres in the old days. Messy melts that runs all over, nails half acre in hot weather like this. Okay, it's in the, win- in the winter, but stop this time of year. Wonder if he's stealing tyres and fixing them up. Miss Hudson left the room, talking to herself, leaving a puddle of liquid rub on the floor. And once been alive, never realising that Don Dell had, had at last made a big splash in the world.